So, hi everybody out there in Floss Tube Land. This is Tina Frazier coming to you from Columbus, Ohio. Today is Sunday, June 7th at approximately 9.26 p.m. Eastern Time. And I'm coming to you today with a, sort of a longish update to show you some things that I got and to um, just kind of talk about some things. So, um, that being said, I will actually start off this, I hope you guys, first of all, first of all, I hope you guys are all doing really well, um, considering everything still going on with the pandemic. Um, I am still on work from home status, um, probably will be for, um, the undetermined future and, um, hopefully work will let me continue working from home, um, kind of indefinitely right at this point because, I do live with my mom now. My mom is 73. She's considered high risk um, because of her age. And, you know, she's not exactly prime health, but she is she is fairly healthy. And hopefully work will take that into consideration and let me stay home. Um, as much as I'd like to go back to work, I really don't want to go back to work because I don't want to have to sit at a desk in front of a bunch of other people all day long. I've been kind of really enjoying um, just getting the work done when I can get it done, being able to, you know, just kind of putter around and do some stuff um, here and there if I'm like, you know, going crazy, going stir crazy. So that being said, oh, tonight's video is brought to you by Starbucks Frappuccino. This is the vanilla flavor. We had a really good dinner tonight, um, full of um, steak and corn, steak rolled out on the grill and corn and salad. It was really good today. Um, I have a couple of videos. We, um, as you know, I have, um, we moved into a new house. This is actually my office space down in our basement living area. My husband and I live in the basement of um, a house that we live in with my mom. My mom has pretty much um, her bedroom up on the main floor, which is right above us. This area here above me is the living room. Um, this fireplace kind of butts up against the fireplace in the living room and basically behind that wall and up is the garage. This, this wall here is the front of the house. The front door is kind of that way and our bedroom is back behind you. Um, and the stairs going up to the kitchen are right here next to me going up to the kitchen and then the house goes that way. So we have the kitchen. The dining room, sunroom, and then the hallway with the bedrooms and the bathroom. The bathrooms. Um, anyway, so we're still getting settled in. My husband and I went over to the house, our old house tonight. Um, most of the stuff is cleared out of it. We still have a bunch of stuff that we're going to go through and throw out. Um, we'll hopefully be done by the end of this month. So um, I've been enjoying the... Um, been enjoying the uh, new house so far. Sitting out on the back patio in the evenings has been really nice. Um, I was sitting out there for a little while after we got back from the other house tonight and um, our dog Rose, she started going woof, woof, under her breath. And I looked up to see two deer running across our house. I have a video for you. Um, hopefully if I can insert it here, I will. But uh, it was, I had my tablet with me and um so whoops that's the wrong thing didn't want to go there didn't want to go there <laughs> okay. all right um but i had my uh tablet with me when i was um sitting out there so you can see here um there's the deer yep that was earlier tonight. They actually ran, walked across our backyard to get to where they were going. So yeah. Um, that was really kind of cool. Um, we have foxes. We have groundhogs. I saw a baby groundhog today. We have skunk. Um, I was out, my husband and I were out walking our dog last night right before bed. And there was a skunk in the neighbor's yard and as we were coming up to it i happened to notice it looked like this animal was standing on its hind legs and then i noticed the white stripe and i'm like holy crap it's a skunk because it was in the shadows 
and the skunk kind of went down and started running off, but he still had his tail up and it was big and bushy. Thankfully, he didn't spray us. We didn't get close enough to get sprayed. Um, but yeah, so there's skunk. We have geese. We have all kinds of birds. And it's just, it's just really great to sit out, out in the backyard and watch all the wildlife wander by. Um, we have a really big backyard. And um, today I happened to hop on my riding mower and mow both front and the backyards. And I have a little video of me on the riding mower showing you a little tour of our backyard that I will hopefully be able to um, get off my phone and post at the end of this video. So keep watching and you'll get to see a video of my mowing our backyard. Um, first part of me, my husband and I went to AgPro which is a John Deere um, dealer here in central Ohio. And we purchased a riding mower because we have almost three quarters, we have just over three quarters of an acre of land here. And um, I'm not, mowing is my job and uh, I'm not pushing a mower through three quarters of an acre of land. So we, we got a riding mower and Oh goodness, I'm actually getting a little more proficient at it. This is about my fourth or fifth time out riding and I'm getting proficient with uh, mowing the yard. So um, I will put that video of me mowing the yard and the tour of the yard for you at the end of the video. Um, if I can figure out if I can get it downloaded off my phone. Um, you will see me wiping my eyes and touching my face because it's a habit I have. Um, I do wash my hands, I do sterilize my hands, I have hand sanitizer nearby, so um, my eyes also water all the time. Um, it's just a habit, it's just something that happens to me all the time, so if it looks like I'm crying, I'm not really, my eyes are just watering and I don't notice that, you know, that the tears are forming and streaming down my cheeks until they stream down my cheeks. So you'll see me, like right now, wiping my eyes because my eyes are watering a little bit, they're a little irritated. Um, but anyway, so I did mow my yard today. That was a lot of fun. Um, at least it hasn't been as hot as, and humid as it has been the last few days. Um, but anyway, I'm still kind of working on getting the craft room set up. Um, we're hopefully going to Ikea in the next week or two and get... Oh, sorry, you guys. We still have to get furniture for the living room and the center room. We're going to get a couple of love seats and some chairs and a couple of... Um, uh, coffee tables and stuff and for the craft room I'd like to get um, one of those craft tables set up where um, you have the two by three cube storage systems um, laid down on their side so it's two high and three long and then put a tabletop on top of it to make a big craft table in the middle of the room and then put storage in it's the same bedroom that we've put um, the uh, shelving in the closet. Um, I have a lot more craft stuff still down here in the basement that uh, my mom isn't really quite uh, knowing that um, I have this much stuff still. So I'm actually going to turn you for a minute. Um, actually, no, I won't. My laptop is plugged into my extra monitor that's right here next to me for work. So, um, but anyway, um, I can turn you a little bit this way. So, um, you'll see on the floor behind me, there's some boxes. Um, the white box right there, that's kind of old. Those are uh, cross stitch patterns that I have. There's my cross stitch pattern. And down here is my thread box. This is all the stuff from the shelves that I have had for the 20 years. All that is packed away. Let me see if I can see that. Way over there, you will see the red thread, the red and green thread, the red vegetable thread, the cut box. There's a couple of diamond beads on the wood shelves over there. But that little green thread has all my diamond beads and stuff in it. We're still, still in the process of unpacking, you guys. Sorry about moving the camera. Just moving my laptop. But we're still in the process of unpacking, and we're probably going to be for a little while. Um, We've had a friend come over to help us uh, to get the um, electrical down here squared away because back behind the um, bar area that you just saw, um, that's my husband's and my bedroom. Um, the other part of the finished basement 
the, the other part of the finished part of the basement, half the basement's finished, the other half is just like um, typical basement, looks more like storage and everything like that. Um, but the slight switch here on the wall at the base of the steps um, operated the lights in this room and the lights and the outlets in the room that we're using for a bedroom. So our friend has come over. Um, there were only two outlets in the other room back there. So our friend has come over. He split the light out here. So this light switch only operates the lights in here and doesn't operate any outlets. <clears throat> he removed the two outlets back there and the lights, put them on their own switch. He added a second switch there back in the bedroom so we can turn the lights out here in here and that way it's kind of a two-way switch so we can turn the lights on on and off here or on and off in the bedroom area um, he added two ceiling lights because there was only one little the typical basement um, light socket with one light bulb that's that was the only thing back there so we needed more light back there so he put in two overhead um, uh, lights, bedroom lights back there for us. And he added um, one, two, three more outlets and the conduit um, for the uh, lights and the outlets in the bar area, that wood area that you saw <clears throat> a little bit ago. He um, covered that with conduit so it wouldn't be exposed wire. Um, his next project that he's going to help us with, um, we had <laughs> we had a tree branch fall uh, about a week ago um, or so late at night, or not late at night, but about five o'clock one evening. I was sitting here working, and then all of a sudden, all the electric electricity went out. The problem with the electricity going out here is a we're on well water, we're not on city water, we're on well water, so we have a water pump. Uh, electricity goes out, water pump goes out. Water pump goes out, no water. We can't flush, we can't raw water. Well, we can flush once, but we can't flush, we can't shower, we can't wash, we can't do anything with water. We can't get water out of our fridge because there's no water pump if the, the electric goes out. Um, also, we have a sump pump that um, two weeks ago, it was running really, really, really a lot. Like every minute, the sump pump was flushing out the um, sump uh, because we were having rain. I mean, we were talking like two or three inches over a couple of hours. It was crazy rainy here, and um, our sump pump was just going over time. So the drains, um, the downspouts and stuff for the house go into the ground, and they actually drain into the sump pump, which is really into the sump which is really kind of weird but it's the way that drainage around the house was set up it's, they're like french drains or something so um when the power went out we realized oh god uh, we were really just happy that the um the rain there was no rain when the power went out the power was out for a few hours because a tree branch had fallen across the lines the power lines down the street and it basically like kind of blew a trans blew a transformer and um, cause the power to go out in the entire street. So, um, you know, the uh, they got the tree limb cleared away and they got the everything replaced. It, the power was out. Um, it, the power went out about five. It came back, back on around 8.30 that night. So we were only, um, luckily we were gone. We had planned on going out to dinner. So we went out to dinner, ran a few errands and then came back and the power was already back on. But, um, so we've determined that, um, one of the things, one of the purchases we're going to have to make, we're going to have to get a generator because no power means no water because of the fact that we're on well water and we have a, a water pump. And also um, the sump pump, our sump pump currently has no battery backup. So our friend who's doing the electrical work for us, um, he is also... Uh, in the process of buying us a sump pump with a battery backup. So it's basically got like two pumps in it. It's got the main sump pump and then it's got the battery backup pump, which will kick in in the case of a power outage. So um, he's gonna be installing that for us. And um, you know, the, the sump is just a big hole in our basement floor. Um, those of you that don't have sumps, you may not know this, but you know, the, the, everything drains into this big hole and then the sump pump flushes it all out. And it keeps 
your basement from flooding. That's what the whole sump pump thing is. So the fact that we had the power outage and we've had heavy rain, um, we now know for sure that we should definitely get a sump pump with a battery backup. So he's going to be putting that in. Um, <laughs> there's just a lot of little things that we're going to get. So we're going to get a generator. We've got um, furniture from Ikea that we have to get. I've got a craft room that I need to finish setting up um, because I have some ideals about the craft room. And I have tons more crafting stuff than my mother. She just basically has some yarn and that's about it. Um, she's gotten into some diamond paintings. So we've got a couple of new diamond paintings. I don't have her new one to show. Um, she hit the clearance area at Joanne's the other day when we were in there. We went in on Friday. Well, I took a took a day off, played a little hooky from work, and um, we've also been having car issues. <laughs> so we drive up. My husband and I have a PT Cruiser, a 2005 PT Cruiser Turbo, limited edition. It's called Blueberries, Blueberry a la mode or something like that. But like the lower part of the car is a dark blue, and the top part of the car is a cream. But it's called Blueberry. Um, blueberry pie or something, blueberry a la mode, I guess. Um, it, <laughs> we bought it off our sister-in-law and the car has been running hot, um, the last several months. Um, we drove it to West Virginia last September, um, to go to the Sternwheeler Festival down in Marietta, Ohio. Um, it was the last Sternwheeler Festival that we were going to be able to hang out on the, the in-laws front porch and watch the Sternwheeler Festival and everything like that. Well, on the way home, the car overheated. We had it and we took it in. Um, the mechanic changed the thermostat and everything like that. Well, <clears throat> you know, here and there, riding on the highway and stuff, the car would get real hot. Um, my mom and I, we went to Marietta in January for an overnight ghost hunt at the Lafayette Hotel um, one weekend in January. and um, we, uh, on our way home or on our way there, the car overheated on the highway and, uh, well, the, the temperature light came on I cranked up the heat and was able to keep the temperature pretty low. We took a different way home that didn't involve the highway. So I was able to keep the car temperature from getting so high, but every now and then, um, we would drive it, you know, on errands and, um, you know, with it being in the eighties and nineties here recently, um, the car, gets really hot really quick. So Friday or Thursday, I had done some research on the internet, found out that there's a bleeder valve that you can um, open up, bleed the air out of, you have to bleed the air out of the system. And um, you know, that the air pockets in there could make the engine run hot because they create steam and the steam is hot. So um, I attempted to bleed the engine. Well, um, went to pick up my husband, we noticed that it was spraying antifreeze. Um, and we didn't know if I had, cause I'd filled it, you know, once I bled the system, I filled it back up and, um, went to pick him up from work and it was spraying antifreeze. So we called up and, uh, we called up Thursday or Friday morning and they said, yeah, just have it towed. So, um, Friday morning I had the car towed to the mechanic. Um, they took a look at it. They said the bleeder valve is open. And I was like, okay, well, I thought for sure that I had closed it because I couldn't turn it anymore with the wrench I had and everything like that. So they went ahead and did a flush and fill and everything like that. Well, the mechanics three miles from our house, I picked up the car at five o'clock between four 30 and five o'clock on Friday, drove it the three miles home and it overheated like in three miles, the car overheated. So I'm sitting there going, great. What they did didn't fix it. Great. Okay, fine. They think they found, they found a leak. They couldn't find any other leaks when they flushed and filled it. What they didn't tell us was the core. When they cleaned that flushed and filled the radiator, they cleaned out the core. It was sludge in it. Um, so yeah, they didn't tell us that. They said, oh, well, there was sludge in it yesterday when we cleaned it. But, you know, uh, it could be the radiator. It could be some other stuff. It could be the head gasket, which, uh, you know, everything like that could be the thermostat. So bring it in we'll check it. So Saturday morning, I drove it back to the, um, mechanic and, um, they took a look at it. They found out that, you know, one of the other mechanics, um, on, in their network had replaced the thermostat back in September when it overheated on us on our way home from the Sternwheeler festival. 
And so they said, well, the good thing is the thermostat's under warranty, so we don't need to replace that like we thought we might, but um, we'll do the radiator. So the car's in the shop. We'll pick it up hopefully tomorrow with a new radiator, and hopefully it'll fix all the cooling issues. Um, everybody that we talked to said that it doesn't sound like a head gasket, but there you have it. <laughs> so um, hopefully the radiator will fix our car issues. Uh, I've been going on for about 20 minutes about stuff and life and everything like that, but I haven't really been showing you cross-stitch. So um, hopefully you <laughs> don't mind a little life update. But yeah, we're having car issues, but we're moving in. We're getting things organized. Um, we'll hopefully be completely done with the other house by the end of this month. By the end of this month, that's our goal. Um, and hopefully I'll have the craft room upstairs done by the end of this month. That's the goal. Get all my craft room upstairs and organized. Um, that being said, um, there are, so I'll get into a couple of things first. There's two apps on my tablet that I have been using in the last um, year, year and a half or two. Um, the first one is Pattern Keeper. A lot of, where'd I go? Okay, so this is the this is the Pattern Keeper app on my phone. These are some of the charts that I have loaded into Pattern Keeper. This is a cross stitch app where you load PDFs um, saved to a certain PDF format. You load PDFs into this thing, and I will actually pull this one up. But you load PDFs into this thing. You're not going to be able to see what one this is. But anyway, you load it into it. There's your pattern. You can click the search. Um, you can click the search, tap on a symbol, and it'll highlight all the symbols on that page for you in green. Um, this color just happens to be 310. You can see the highlighted here. You can search. You can mark the pattern um, for the stitches that you've stitched. It's really great. It's called Pattern Keeper. And um, I've got quite a few. This is the bottom of my list. Um, so yeah, I have a lot of stuff. So if you remember, um, my last video, I had mentioned that I was a little crazy because I was going to be stitching this large epic Pokemon, generations one through five, this huge epic cross-stitch piece that I was gritting fabric for. I had a piece of 40 count white linen or cream linen that um, I was gritting fabric for to do this huge epic Pokemon generations one through five pattern. Um, and I had started the gritting. And then somebody on my Facebook page um, thought that it would be a, it would be kind of cool to do a big, huge, epic Pokemon cross uh, picture. Um, let me do this. All right. So he posted this picture and he's like, find Waldo. It was a huge, epic Pokemon picture with Waldo from Where's Waldo drawn in on it. So. Let me see if I can get down to it on my friend's page. Um, but yeah, he posted he posted a picture of it, and then he said, "Find Waldo." Found Waldo, and it was really cool. And I was like, "I want that as a cross stitch pattern." So I posted it to the Pokemon Cross Stitchers Facebook page, and they said, "Find Waldo." All right. So this is generally the picture. Okay. This is the picture right here. Okay. There you go. Huge epic Pokemon picture, right? It's not exactly the clearest picture, but the huge, epic Pokemon picture. So I shared it to the Pokemon Cross Stitchers Facebook page, and one of the people 
that has been taking their Epic Pokemon Generations pictures and translating them into Pattern Keeper patterns for everybody to use Pattern Keeper to stitch, um, which I happen to have the, the Generations 1 through 5 Epic Pokemon that I was going to do in Pattern Keeper. Um, he contacted me privately and he said, hey, I have part of it done. Do you want to take a look at it? Um, I was like, oh my God. So he took my picture and he created a cross stitch pattern for me in pattern keeper format of this epic Pokemon thing. And you guys, I have to tell you, this, the, the gen, epic Pokemon generations one through five pattern that I was doing, I told you the stitch count was 798 stitches wide by 1,000 stitches long. Okay? Okay? I told you that, right? This is the same size, you guys. So guess what I'm stitching instead? I will be stitching Epic Pokemon Where's Waldo? And I'm still going to do the Where's Waldo, like the white of his eyes and the stripes of his hat and his shirt. Might not be able to find him. Maybe you can. I know where he's at. I can see him. Um, I'm going to stitch him in glow in the dark. So when you turn off the lights, you can see where he is at. That's going to be cool. I'm looking forward to that. So I have the grading started. Um, I have a little bit more. I did a little bit more grading this week. I haven't done any stitching on any projects this week, so I have no more updates to show you. I don't have the um, the gridded fabric down here because it's up on my big scroll frame um, kind of in process. I have at least one page or mostly one page gridded for this already. Um, so I'm going to be starting. I'm going to be starting up here in this corner, way up here. I'm going to be starting that way up here. So um, that's going to be a new start for me sometime soon. But I have a couple other things I need to finish up first. I kind of, I think I kind of want to finish more chocolate bunnies. And I actually have a diamond painting that I need to finish before I start on this. Um, I need to get that, uh, the Victoria's Moon diamond painting that I've been needing to do a review on for a while finished before I start this. So that's my goal in the next couple weeks is to get, more chocolate bunnies finished and um, the diamond painting finished before I start this. But you guys, I have the pattern for this now. I did pay. I did uh, give the guy some money for putting this through um, through his uh, pattern software and doing this for me. He did it as a as a he did it as a um, as a generous thing, um, and. Uh, so I, I gave him some money for his time and effort. So um, that's really great. I'm looking forward to that. Um, so and, and I'm just excited, you guys. I get to do an epic Pokemon Where's Waldo. I think that's just going to be so funny. Um, I'm not typically, um, I'm not a super huge Pokemon fan. My husband and I play Pokemon Go, but there you go. All right. So I have um, some new stuff to show you. So this is already open, but I haven't opened the actual package. This is my Garon Toten Bags 11 by 11 Grand Guard for the month of June. Um, this came last weekend. Wow. This is beautiful. It's in greens. It has eye. Oh, it's butterflies. It looks like eyes, but look at this, you guys. Look at the butterflies. It's butterflies. I think it's butterflies. It's lovely. Yes, they're butterflies. But it's lovely. It's in greens and blues or teals. It's lovely. Mm, and they're, they're, um, oh, that smells, that smells really good. They're Grand Guards. I love their Grand Guards. I also like their project bags, but I'm in their Grand Guard of the Month Club. So that's my 11 by 11 Grand Guard for June. <coughs> I wanted to um, get into their um, project bag of the month, but I wasn't able to, so I just stayed on the Grand Guard of the month. Um, one of the other things, too, there's quite a few stitchers like Michelle Bendy Stitchy. Um, she and several other people um, get Moe's Sail Floss, 
and I haven't had the chance to get any Mo self loss. And I happened to be on his Facebook page uh, last Sunday or the Sunday before last. I think it was might have been the Sunday before last or sometime in the last two weeks. And he had just died some new floss. You guys. I have most cell floss. This is the first most cell the first most cell floss that I ever have that I own. The only most cell floss that I currently own. So I will show you the colors I got. I got two of each color that he had up for grabs. Um I can show them to you. So this color is called Francis Maria. Francis Maria. And it's a bright, bright yellow. It's variegated. Goes from a light yellow to a dark, a darker yellow. That's Francis Maria. Now again, I got two skeins of every color I ordered. So and I think the total of this only came to like 23 or 25 to about 25 bucks. This next one is called Elsie. And it goes from a light purple. It looks more gray here, but it goes from a light pur lighter purple lavender to a darker purple. Not super dark, not as dark as my shirt. My shirt's coming out more bluish purple. But this one is called Elsie. And apparently, most sale. When you um, when you're on his Facebook group, I will put the link to the Facebook group below. When you're on, let me write that down actually, so I remember um, what I need to. Um, to um, we'll write it in the back. Sale mowing. No sale mowing. Uh, uh, wildlife. Here on. Okay, so you're not going to be able to see my notes. My notes are back here on the bottom. There's my notes down there. This next one is called Cynthia. Cynthia. And this one is a purple into a yellow. A purple into a yellow. This is called Cynthia. You're not going to be able to get these because it's a little washed out. The light in here kind of makes them washed out. But uh, this next one is a bluish purple or a purplish blue into kind of an aqua color. This one is called Mary. Purplish blue into an aqua color. And this, this colors are brighter than they appear on here. There you go. That's a little more true. Maybe I can get this. That one, the one I just showed you is called Mary. This is Cynthia again. Did I get them a little closer? No, because that purple looks gray. But it's actually purple. This one is really pretty. I fell in love with this one. This one is called Hazel. It's basically like a teal into kind of a green. A bright pale green. That gets it. Hazel. This next one is called Joy. It's a darker teal into a light blue. Joy. This next one is called Joan. This is a very light lavender into kind of a little bit of a darker light blue. This one is called Joan. And then the last two that I got, again, I bought two of every color. Um, this one is called Sharon. And this is kind of a, uh, I would say kind of almost like a watermelon pink into kind of a, a raspberry. Like a watermelon pink into kind of a raspberry. Beautiful. 
So there you have it. Let me see if I can show you this yellow a little bit better up closer. There we go. Really bright, bright yellow. So what I was going to say earlier was um, on Mo Sale, when you're in the Facebook group, he posts um, he posts a thread when he has uh, floss ready, um, when he has dye lots or dyes ready. Um, he'll tell you he'll post pictures and tell you how many of each color way he has, and then you put a comment of me please, and then how many are how many you're requesting. How many requesting and how many in the batch are left? So like, you know, say he has 45 and you're, you know, you're the second person to say you want two. The first person put me, please, two, 40, 43. You would put me, please, two, 41 to tell other people how many are left in the batch. So I went through and I locked out. So you guys, <laughs> I have my first batch of Mo self loss. I'm looking forward to figuring out um, what pieces I can add these to, um, what conversions I can make to some of my projects going forward. Really looking forward to doing that. Um, really excited about some of these colors, like that yellow is just absolutely beautiful. Um, I don't know if I can even get any more of these colors or if these are typical colors that Mo Mo's offers for sale on a regular basis. I don't know, but um, looking forward to this. If any of you out there have any suggestions with what I can do or patterns that maybe specifically call for Mo Self Floss, please let me know. Um, I'm not typically a sampler stitcher, so for me to use these on a sampler, um, you know, I don't know. It. We'll see. Um, I have some things in mind that I could probably use these on. But, um, yeah, this is my first set of Mo Self Floss, you guys. I'm so excited for this. And this, the floss is really soft, too. Um, so I got my Mo Self Floss. I got my, um, I got my Garon Grimgard of the month. So, um, the next two installments, I think I showed you, um, this one pattern, um, uh, the newest installment. Yeah. The newest installment of the um, Snow Village came in. Um, we have the Snowflake Stand. I'll just show you all the ones I have. Uh, the Peppermint Parlor. The Frozen Hot Chocolate Shop. Some of these I've showed you before because I have these. I've already had these. The Popsicle Cart. I'm not sure which one of these was the newest one that just that I just picked up last weekend. But this is the Skate and Sled Shop. Then we have the banner. This is the middle piece. Um, Snow Boutique. I think this is one of the ones I just picked up in Snowball Stand. So I have most of the patterns. I think there's two more coming out. And I think I'm missing one. I'm missing the ice creamery. Um, it hasn't come in yet. My local needle workshop. But uh, when I start that, um, I will be stitching it on. Mirage from Picture This Plus. Um, it's kind of like a stormy, stormy darker gray with a bunch of modeling in it. So Mirage by Picture This Plus. This is a piece of 28 count Lugana, 18 by 27. So this is what I'm going to be stitching my uh, Snow Village um, piece on once I get it started. Um, probably going to start with the banner in the middle and then work my way around. But I do have. Um, you know, like quite a few of the um, flosses already pulled for this. Like here's a classic colorworks cherry tomato um, and stuff like that. So I have some of the flosses already in in here um, for the pattern. So um, that'll be a new start coming up soon because I'm collecting that. Um, one of my favorite movies. Um, this is since growing up. One of my favorite movies, musicals of all time, is The Sound of Music. Um, when I was growing up, my parents used to let me stay up special to watch The Sound of Music when it came on TV every year. And as you know, around around the holidays, they do The Sound of Music on 
around Christmas time. It's been a popular Christmas movie for everybody to watch. But my grandma had an 8-track cassette player, and she had an 8-track of The Sound of Music uh, soundtrack. She had an 8-track soundtrack of The Sound of Music. My grandma is the biggest influence of my love of crafting. Um, I grew up doing crafts with my grandma. She belonged to this group called the Holly Doits. They would meet once a month at somebody's house. That person would provide lunch for everybody in the group. And they would, that person would also get the craft supplies and the instructions, and they would sit and do a craft together. They would also bring some uh, one or two gifts, Christmas gifts, for people in their own family to, um, to the group. And somebody would hold all the Christmas gifts until their November-ish meeting or so. And then everybody would get their Christmas gifts back um, throughout the, that they collected and brought in throughout the, throughout the year um, so they could give them to their family. Um, <laughs> so it was called the Holly Do-Its because they did a lot of Christmas crafts and stuff like that. So my grandma was very crafty. That's where I get my love of crafting um, from. My grandma was a needle pointer. I have one of her needle points um, and one of her in progress needle points that I can show at a later time. But I have uh, one of the needle point things that she finished that was hanging on her kitchen wall ever since I was little. Um, I have that. Um, it needs reframed, but I have that. But anyway, um, so whenever we did crafts and whenever we did anything, my grandma knew that I loved the sound of music. So we, you know, she'd pop in her eight track and we'd sit there and craft and sing. Sometimes we'd do puzzles and sing. We'd color, we'd bake, we'd do stuff, but we, we were always kind of doing things to the sound of music. And we'd sing and, you know, laugh and talk. And, um, <laughs> They went to Austria when I was little. My grandma died in 1986 when I was a sophomore in high school. Um, of all the people in my family that I wish my husband could have met, it would have been my grandma because um, I'm a lot like her in a lot of ways. And uh, bless her soul, I just I just really miss her. I'm the oldest grandchild of three. Well, technically of six. I'm the oldest grandchild of six. And uh, so I got to spend every summer growing up with my grandparents, like almost the entire summers growing up with my grandparents. Um, my mom and I, before my mom remarried when I was seven, um, between the ages of two and seven, my mom and I lived alone. My grandparents, we actually lived with my grandparents for, you know, a few months on and off throughout that period of time. So I got to, I got to form a great bond with my grandmother and grandfather. And um, my grandfather, who actually isn't my real grandfather, my real grandfather died when I was seven, but um, my step-grandfather or my grandfather, my second grandfather, um, passed away in 2007. Um, yeah, it was, it was kind of rough, but he passed away Veterans Day in 2007. Um, and I went to I went to his funeral. It was just really tough. Um, my grandma passed in 1986. She had a breast cancer. She um, neglected to go get it looked at. I found it in. We were getting. I was about 12. We were getting ready. We were getting ready for dinner one night, and to go out to dinner with my grandfather. Um, he was at work still, and she had come out of the shower and she was putting her bra on. And I said, "Grandma, your your your, your booby looks a little funny." So she sat me down and she had me feel it. And she goes, don't tell your grandpa. And I have to tell you, when I was 12, that was sometime July, August, her, her lump was about the size of a golf ball. And back in the very early 80s, things were different back then. She asked me, she said, please, don't say anything to grandpa. I want him to find it. I'm fine. Everything's cool. He found it in October. He found it in October. I had seen it in July. So from July to October, she knew something was there. She didn't say a word. He had her go in. Of course, she had to have her breast removed. She ended up, over the years, she ended up having both breasts removed and metastasized, went into her spine, you know, just all over. But she died um, 
she died the weekend. She died December 5th, 1986, I believe was the year. Um, she died the week, the weekend after Thanksgiving that year. We had an emergency family reunion for Thanksgiving that week, that year um, because her health had gone downhill so fast. Um, <laughs> but anyway, my grandma is the reason for um, my love of crafting of any type um, and also my love for um, the sound of music. So I have the um, Silver Creek Samplers came out with the Sing a Sampler series. The set of four projects um, of my favorite things, Do Re Mi, you know the song from uh, the sound of music. So um, I've been wanting to get this started. I've had these patterns forever. Um, but basically it says, Doe, a deer, a female deer, Ray, a drop of golden sun, me, a name, I call myself, Fa, uh, a long, long way to run, So, a needle pulling thread, La, a note to follow, So, Tea, a drink with jam and bread that will bring you back to Doe. And then at, at the bottom of each thing, it, the saying goes all the way across, When you know the notes to sing, you can sing most anything. Typical thing. So since my grandma and I used to, I, I love this. I love love this song. I love the sound of music. Didn't have the fabric to do it. So um, I went to my local needle workshop here in Columbus, crossed my heart, and I picked up the fabric this last week to start on. Um, you're not going to be able to see this very well, but this is, um, I got 35 count Weeks Dye Works Angel Hair Linen. I got a piece big enough to do it all the way across, plus some. Um, I originally thought I was going to do it like this. I was going to do it up and down. I was debating about doing it, doing one long piece up and down. But looking at the patterns, um, when you the words at the bottom, when you know the notes to sing, if you look, notes to sing, you can sing. You'll see that the G in sing if I did it this way, if I did it up and down like I kind of wanted it to, the N would cut off down here and the G would be weird. And I didn't want to have to fuss with it, trying to figure out how to squish things together or stretch things so I could get the words to fit right. Um, I just didn't want to worry about it. So I am actually going to do them long ways um, like this. So I'm actually going to do them long ways, sideways, like this, instead of like this. Now, just to make the words fit. And I'm going to do them all together on one big piece. So I needed a piece of um, linen that would do it. So I got an 11 by 36 piece of 35 count Weeks Dye Works Angel Hair. They didn't have a big enough piece of the called for, which is... Um, Zweigart 32 count light sand linen over two. So I picked angel hair. Now I don't know if you're going to be able, this isn't, you're not going to be able to see this, but it's kind of a, um, what does this remind me of? Kind of like if you put a lot of creamer if, in your coffee. If your coffee is more creamer than it is coffee. Um, it's not really a butter, it's not really a butter color, because it's not quite so yellow. I don't know what it reminds me of, but, um, so I got this really long piece. It's a long and narrow piece. So, I have to serge one edge, this top edge here isn't done, so I'm probably going to stitch it with this, this part, because it's, I have the selvage edge. But I have enough width, but I have more than enough length to do it. So I'm probably going to have 10 or 11 inches, but it's going to go on this fabric. And um, I have most of the flosses to go with it. I put a lot of the flosses in the floss bags, but like, so I'm doing it using mostly the called for flosses. But uh, yeah. Um, I tried looking for something where the golds wouldn't blend 
You know, like it, yours is weak side works curry, guest, Grecian gold, lamb's wool. Even the lamb's wool shows up pretty well on that. Although I may have to backstitch the lamb's wool part. Harvest basket. Yeah, I wanted something where the yellows didn't necessarily, like, the yellows and golds didn't necessarily, like, blend in too much. So that's why I picked this pattern. So um, <laughs> this is going to be another new start for me sometime soon, hopefully. Um, the Do Re Mi Sing a Sampler series by Silver Creek Samplers. Um, this is going to be another new start. I've got to, um, I've got to serge the edges um, on my fabric to keep them from fraying, and then get it, and get it in my frame of choice for stitching. So. One of the things I kind of plan on is I kind of plan on watching The Sound of Music and thinking of my grandma as I'm stitching this. So that's going to be another new start here in the next month or two, hopefully. So I have the Snow Village. I have the Sing a, so Sing a Sampler series by Silver Creek Samplers. To start. Then I picked up, oh, okay. Well, here's the next next installment. I did get Ice Creamery. Here's Ice Creamery. This goes to the Snow Village. That's the one thing, the other thing I picked up. So, where did it go? Oh, down here. Yeah. And, uh, anyway. Oh, wow, it's going on an hour. Look, look, look at me. I don't have any new starts or anything like that for you. And uh, we're going on an hour. I did get a new issue of the World of Cross Stitching magazine. Uh, this is the um, the June 2020 issue number 294. Just cross stitching. There's some cute patterns in here. It's a really pretty wreath where you frame it using two embroidery hoops. I've seen that, that framing technique before. Little key holders, a little boardwalk. Ooh, sorry you guys. The tool alphabet for dad. Um, some little various motifs. They're British based motifs. British based motifs, Shakespeare, British flag. Like that, a little corgi. Um, more stuff for dad. A couple of little tiny animals. Um, a seaside thing. The heirloom project. April showers bring me flowers. Again, I'm not a sampler person. So, I don't know if I necessarily stitch anything out of this issue, but um, Margaret Sherry. This little birthday cat is super cute. Um, as you know, Margaret Sherry passed away not long ago. So a lot of her stuff. A lot of her stuff has been really popular over the years. And it came with this free pattern, Stitch a Classic Cottage. Again, this is a really nice, this is a really nice pattern. It's a heavier, heavier print paper with a laminate. It's laminated. So like you could use like dry erase marker and whatnot on this. But I can't show you the back because it's got the pattern on it. But that was the free gift. The second free gift was this time to celebrate happy birthday card. Yeah, you get the floss. And the fabric and a little card to go around it. All right. Ooh. So, um, as far as my plans for June, as those of you that have watched my uh, watch my uh, videos know that I was considering doing Stitch Mania. I didn't do Stitch Mania. I just kind of watched everybody else do Stitch Mania because I kind of lost my stitchy bug. Which is why I've only been gritting fabric and not stitching. But um, anyway, 
I also, oh, I've also been seriously neglectful of my um, School of Magical Stitches homework and my reading. I haven't finished the books for March. So we had two books in March. Didn't finish the two in March. Haven't finished the one in April. Haven't haven't started the one in April. Haven't started the one in May. And we're into June. Yeah, I'm behind. I'm still reading um, the Beauty and the Beast, the Beast, the Villains book. I'm still reading Beast. So yeah, I'm, I'm way behind in the school magical s stitches and literature reading assignments. And I also haven't been keeping up with the homework. So um, let's see. Um, I am in the boardwalk. Um, they've merged the um, they've merged the group, so I'm in technically board. I'm in technically boardwalk resort, but they've merged us with beach. So um, so we're now on to villains book four, week two, um, and it's Maleficent. So. Um, the first time I've looked at the School of Magical Stitches homework. Um, Maleficent is not getting a little upset, so we're going to stop here. We really don't want her to cast a spell or turn into a dragon. Um, I have to stitch. They under stitches on a project you wished for and received. Hmm. You will need to go back to either the month of February or April. You will need to pick one of the tasks that was assigned for weekly homework and redo one of the assignments. You will need to state the month, villain, and prompt. You will do 200 stitches or 400 stitches penalty. Uh, the third task, um, stitch 200 stitches on a project that has a border. Um, task four, uh, stitch on a project that has horns. Um, I might, I don't know. This is the first time I've looked at homework in a little while. So I could be, uh, hmm, I don't know if I'll, if I'll do anything. I've been like neglecting homework since like probably early March. I haven't done much homework at all for School of Magical Stitches or any of the other groups or any of the other stitch alongs, <clears throat> frankly. I haven't been keeping up with it. So I don't know how my School of Magical Stitches is going this year. Um, I need to get the reading done. I haven't really been doing any reading either. Part of the reason part of the reason why I haven't been keeping up on things, I've been playing Animal Crossing. <laughs> Not every day. I haven't, I haven't even been keeping up on Animal Crossing because I haven't been playing that every day either. I haven't played Animal Crossing since I think Thursday. What the heck? What the heck? Seriously. Anyway. All right. So um, let's see. We have all kinds of stuff. So I, I haven't been keeping up with any, really, any of my Facebook groups or anything like that. Pam and Steph from Just Keep Stitching, they're doing the I'll Be Home Stitch Along. Um, you can go to their group and or their website. Oh. Or join their Facebook group for their I'll Be Home Stitch Along that's happening at the end of June. I think they're starting at June 25th. Um, there's, you can find more information if you go to Just Keep Stitching here on YouTube or um, look them up on the internet. Google the I'll Be Home Style, whatever they're doing. There's all kinds of stuff going on, you guys. There's so many things to keep track of. I'm just, eh. So one of the things I do in my planner, this is my, I, I'm a passion planner person. And I do kind of like a little bit of memory planning, but like I use washi tape and stuff to decorate my planners every week. And I have color themes. This this week, um, this past week was um, rainbow, you know, for pride. This week is also kind of rainbow teal. But I have a little tracker at the bottom of my weekly thing. <laughs> down here I have uh, 11 things on here diamond painting princess and the pea which is a SS fairy tale cell 
the uh, Enchanted Reindeer, which is the uh, Virtual Stitchers Donna Gelsinger cell that started this year. I uh, Whipgo. We have two entries for Whipgo. I haven't entered them in this week. Um, most of mine is uh, the two this the two this month for June for me for Whipgo is. Um, No, I think I have it here in my planner, actually. Uh, the two for June for me are these orange ones here. We have this one here and this one here. So it's number 15 and number 17. So it's this one here and this one here. Um, 15 is pick a 2020 new start previously started and add 750 stitches, 750 more stitches. Um, and then 17 is pick a current whip that is not listed on whip go board and add 750 stitches. So this month I'm working on whips for whip go. Yeah, I have two squares besides the free square. I have two squares on my whip go board blacked out. One's from February, one's from April. Yeah, he was, I, I'm not doing good on Whipco either. I haven't been keeping up with that. But um, for my tracking, I've been tracking the minutes I, so I have the minutes I stitch, Whipco. I have myth, myth mythological stitching, uh, enchanted stitching, mythic, mythological and magic, and uh, SS alphabet soup, school of magical stitches, and then I keep track. Um, well, trying to keep track of the minutes I stitched this week. But as you can see, I didn't even fill out my grid. But I didn't do any of this. So it's going to look like the zeros all the way across the top of these slashes all the way through the week. Um, so this next week, you can see here's my tracker. It's probably going to look a lot like the same too, but I'm hoping to get some more stitching done on more chocolate bunnies. Um, I did finish the letters, so we shall see. I'm probably going to make the bunnies' um, noses pink because I like that pink color that's in there. Um, it's stuff like that. Oh, one of the other things I picked up because I was actually going to, um, wasn't sure. If the epic Pokemon with Waldo was going to be the right size. Hold on just a minute. So hi. Sorry about that little interruption. You guys didn't notice. It was a couple minute interruption as my husband um, came in to ask a couple of questions. He was in his man cave playing Black Desert. But anyway, so I didn't know if the, um, the pattern for the Pokemon with Waldo was going to be uh, bigger than the um, piece of fabric that I was gridding for the other Pokemon, epic Pokemon that I was going to do. So in the meantime, while I was waiting on that, I went to Joann's and I got this super huge piece of soft and easy ivory 100% polyester 14 count Ada. This is a 48 by 60 inch piece. I figure it's um, ivory, it's off-white. But I figured I could use it for dyeing. I could practice dyeing with it because I, I do have some red dyes that I'd like to dye. I'd like to learn, you know, do pickle jar dyeing, um, much like um, Carla Bean Crafty does and um, stuff like that. So I, I bought this huge piece of fabric figuring that I could cut pieces off of it and um, use it for other projects if um, I didn't. Ooh, if I didn't need it for the epic Pokemon Wars Waldo. So I do have that. And then at Target, out of the dollar, the dollar spot, this the area in front of Target, um, about two weeks ago in the dollar spot, they had these little pouches. So this one says, Sunset to Sunrise. And this one is, Hello, Summer. And these pouches are kind of a soft, rubbery plastic kind of feel. And I'm gonna have to cut that off. But um, this is a wet dry, wet dry pouch. 
So yeah, I'm gonna have to cut that off. But they each had little tassels. This this one has a yellow tassel. This one has a pink. But it's kind of like a you know kind of a water resistant, waterproof kind of little pouch. I'm gonna use them for project bags for something coming up soon. Um, the project bags that I have uh, the Snow Village in and the Do Re Mi uh, Sing a Song sampler from Silver Creek Samplers are in these little pouches that I actually picked up at the Dollar Tree last summer um, when I was out in California helping my mom when my stepdad passed away. Um, the Dollar Tree had these kawaii um, little project bags. So my Sing a Song sampler and my Snow Village are in these little project bags. But I got these at the dollar, Target Dollar Spot about a week or two ago. And these are kind of like rubbery vinyl. Kind of really cute, really soft. I think they'll be really cute project bags, you know, just to pick them up and go. They're a good size. Um, so, yeah. And I've talked a little bit about my plans. I've talked a little bit about life in general, um, everything like that. I've talked, showed some of my haul. Well, I was at Joanne's. I had also had to pick up on Friday when I was at Joanne's with my mom. I had to pick up floss bags for my flosses for... Uh, sing a song samplers and back in the clearance aisle they had these needle holder cards okay now I'm usually not one to keep a bunch of needles threaded and ready to go um, for some of my projects but I figured these are on clearance I got them for $1.97 a piece they had a couple more I probably should have picked up more but basically it has this magnetic strip Put your needle across there write the color number there and it has little slits on this side that you can put your thread through so you can have your needles on the magnet and you can have your needles threaded and ready to go for your big projects so i picked up two of them figured i'd give them a shot not knowing how i would like them there's one per package so i picked up two but yeah, they were at clearance, on clearance at Joann's on Friday. So, if any of you use these, tell me how you like them. Or if nothing else, I can give them away or something. But, um, and that's about it. So, I will actually end it here. Um, don't forget, I am well, I showed you a little snippet of the deer video. I'm probably not going to download it. Um, and attach it to the back here, but I will do the mowing video uh, for you so you can kind of see our yard and our, you know, our big wildlife space and stuff. So, yeah, um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you guys got something out of it. Um, I don't think I'm really going to be starting anything until I get the diamond painting done. I really need to get that diamond painting done, you guys. I got that diamond painting last August, September, and uh, I need to get it done. It's been a year. But anyway, so that's about all I got. Um, oh, I was going to go over the acrostic, um, but I can do that later because I'm, I'm, again, I'm not keeping up on any of my Facebook group challenges. Um, the um, 24 hours acrostic acrostic. For the month of June, I don't know what it is because I didn't. I haven't downloaded it yet. I haven't looked at it. Um, let me see if I can pull that up really quick. No, I um, I'll do it later. Um, anyway, you can see my hair. All my dye is pretty well washed out of my hair. We need to dye my hair. <laughs> I just haven't done it. Um, being on well water, it, it I think the water softener. Um, that we use is kind of washed all the dye out of my hair, so I just have to redo it. It's kind of back to a blonde. Um, it's kind of my basically natural color um, now, but I'd like to go back to purple. I like my purple. I really like the purple. I got my Eat, Sleep, Stitch shirt on. Um, <laughs> I took a shower this morning. We went out, we went shopping, we came back home. I mowed the yard. I got sweaty. In the hour and a half to two hours it took me to mow the yards on a riding mower, I got a little sweaty. And so right before dinner, I took another shower, changed into my eat, sleep, stitch shirt. 
So um, no other news. The needle workshop, my local needle workshop crossed my heart here in Columbus, um, has opened back up to everybody. They're open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 5 p.m. 10 a.m. to noon, it is appointment only. You have a 30-minute window. You can sign up. You can call and reserve a 30-minute window to go into the shop and be the only one in the shop with the, with the customers. Um, from noon to 5, they are 10 customers in the shop at once. That's it. Um, that's all they'll allow. You must, they require you to wear a mask. So if you're going to go to Cross My Heart um, in Columbus, here in Columbus, you need to wear a mask. Uh, just keep that in mind. Um, you can call and place your order, pay for it using credit card. They will, um, you can show up, you can call them, you can say, I'm parked outside. They will bring your stuff to you um, and everything like that. So, um, you know, we have the whole pandemic and everything going on. We have all the protests going on. Protests here in Columbus have been... Uh, kind of crazy. Um, last weekend, there was a lot of looting and violence. Not necessarily on the protesters' part. A lot of it has to do with police. Um, Columbus was under a curfew until last night. Um, Mayor Ginther was urged. Actually, there was a lawsuit pending against the mayor for the curfew because um, there were some businesses that were finally allowed to open after the pandemic, um, after the pandemic lockdown was lifted um, or you know, some of the restrictions were lifted recently by Governor DeWine, the Ohio governor. Um, a couple of the local businesses here in Columbus were in the process of suing the governor, the Columbus governor or the Columbus mayor for to relieve the curfew, we had a curfew from 10 a.m. to 6 or 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. every night, uh, starting last Saturday night, I believe, is when the curfew started. And um, he pulled the curfew. He pulled the curfew restriction um, before the lawsuit could be filed appropriately. Um, so we haven't been we haven't been on curfew for like the last two nights. Uh, since Thursday night or Friday night. One of those two nights was the f first night of no curfew. And we haven't had any looting or rioting or like, you know, violent rioting, um, people getting hurt. The police haven't been, the police haven't been forceful with their policing of the whole curfew situation. So everything's been pretty calm. So, um, Luckily, the curfew here in Columbus has been lifted um, because we haven't had any problems with looting and rioting and um, people getting injured or, you know, anything like that. The police haven't been doing, the police haven't been interfering with peaceful protesters um, like they were early on um, and stuff like that. So everything's, everything's starting to get back to normal a little bit. Um, some of our restaurants, their dining rooms have opened. Some of the restaurants that my husband and I like to go to, some of them still haven't opened their dining room. And some of them that haven't opened their dining room also don't have patio seating. They're all still just carry out, which is kind of a bummer because we, although we wear masks everywhere we go, um, because we live with my mom and she's in the, uh, high risk age category, um, we wear masks everywhere we go. We have been kind of wanting to just go to a restaurant and sit down and eat. There's been a couple of times that we've gone out to eat. I think four times since they've lifted that restriction for dining room, um, dining in at a restaurant. I think we've gone to eat at a restaurant four times um, since then. It's been really nice. Oh. Things are starting to get back to normal here in Columbus, but it's not the normal that we used to have. It's um, the new normal, you know, wearing masks, keeping social distancing. Our Kroger that we shop at, it's our grocery store. 
the Kroger that we shop at used to be they'd have one entrance that was an enter only and one entrance that was an exit only. So you'd have to go in, in one door and out the other. They've now opened both doors up for traffic either way. They've left the cleaning supplies, the sanitation supplies, um, for you to clean your cart on your own. Because, you know, the whole surface thing, um, they say that it's more airborne as opposed to on surfaces and stuff like that. But there's still people out there that aren't wearing masks. Um, there's people out there that aren't observing social distancing. Um, it's just, it's just crazy. Um, we're all expecting, I'm expecting a second surge, August, September, October. I'm expecting more cases. I hope I don't get it. I don't want to give it to my mom. I don't want to give it to my husband. I don't want to get it from my mom or my husband. I just don't want to get it. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I kind of want to stay home too. Um, and not return to the office at work. Although I, I kind of miss the contact with people. <sighs> and some of the friendships that I have there, I kind of miss seeing the people, but I just don't want to, I just don't want to take the chance of getting sick. Anyway, I hope you're all staying safe. I'm going to kind of call it here because this is going to be about an hour and a half video. Just had a really quick update for you. Um, going to be doing a really quick or a diamond painting video here soon for you about, um, this company that, uh, is kind of, has kind of scammed a bunch of people. Um, so I'll be talking about that and showing you diamond paintings and everything from that. Um, and probably working on one of the diamond paintings from it, just so you can see the crappy quality and all that. Um, but, uh, keep, keep, you know, keep watching if you're into diamond painting, um, if you're into cross stitch, I hope you keep watching. I hope you've gotten something out of this. Just let, you know, let me know your thoughts, your, you know, comments below. Um, I do have some giveaways, um, planned in the future. Um, so I will keep you posted about that. Um, there's, I'm gonna, I've got to, I've got to weed down my stash of patterns. So I'm probably just going to be giving some of those away, um, to people here if you want them. So kind of be on the lookout for that. Um, eventually, um, I do have a diamond painting to get away. I've been saying that for a little bit. Now that we're kind of getting settled in, it might be July, August, um, for the giveaways to start. So, um, I hope you've gotten something out of my channel. Um, be sure to leave your comments, your likes, your dislikes, um, your thumbs up, your thumbs down below. I will do my best to respond. Um, to the best of my ability, if you have a question, um, you know, I, I may not know the answer, but I can maybe point you to where you can go to get the answers you need. Um, and I hope you've gotten something out of this and I hope, um, you like everything that, um, that I have to offer. Um, anyway, it was nice talking to you guys for this like hour and 18 minutes. I'm um, sorry I blab blabbed on a for 20 minutes about life, but you know, there you go. Um, so I have like an hour's worth of stitching stuff. Um, anyway, so I hope you enjoy the video of me mowing my yard. It's the view, the nice view of our almost three quarters of an acre here at, uh, my new house. And, um, I'll probably be doing some videos of like organizing, setting up and organizing the craft room. Um, because I have a lot more crafts. You saw my big piles of stuff. Mom doesn't know it's coming upstairs yet. It's been hidden from her. Um, so yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting process. Um, uh, I'll probably do some stitch with me videos this summer out on my back patio. That's the hope. Um, and stuff like that. Anyway, so that being said, I hope you guys are staying healthy. I hope you guys are staying, staying sane. Um, if you're out showing your support, um, in your local protests, uh, stay safe. Um, I am totally with you guys a hundred percent. Um, but there's a really big part of me that doesn't quite know how to help. 
Um, I've been staying away from things. I haven't really been, you know, kind of vocal about it, but uh, I completely think what the cops did to George Floyd was wrong. And although it's too little too late, I think the fact that they're being charged is a good thing. And it's opening up a lot of dialogue that needs to be said, that needs to be talked about. Um, there's some issues in this country, some really big issues. And uh, one of them being, well, I'm not going to go there, but make sure you get out to vote in November. It's going to be really important this year, you guys. Um, Anyway, so I'm not going to get into that, but anyway, um, I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope you guys are just getting getting everything you need. I hope you guys are taking self care um, and uh, any any everything like that. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, um, love the people around you because not everybody around you may be getting love that they need to get from elsewhere. So just love everybody around you, you guys. Okay. Take care, and we'll see you soon. I'm not sure when my next video will be up, but um, be looking for it sometime soon, all right? Take care. I hope you enjoyed my mowing video. Let me know what you think. Um, we'll talk to you soon. Bye now. So hi out there, everybody. Again, this is Tina Frazier. I'm coming to you from Columbus, Ohio. Um, really quick update. I forgot that I was going to talk to you about a different app on my tablet. Um, and the first app that I showed you was Pattern Keeper, which you can use to, um, you know, store your PDF patterns that are um, in a format, a PDF format that will fit Pattern Keeper. You can use them as your stitching to mark off the stitches that you've completed. Oh, goodness. Um, it's very useful for um, people that have done, uh, that do heaven and earth designs or really large projects, big ass projects, as you will, um, that are full coverage. The next one is the X Stitch app. You have the X Stitch app. This is the home page. This is my home page. That is Amid Amish Life. Um, a picture that is not the most recent picture of a mid Amish life. That's just the picture that I selected for my uh, my uh, page. But uh, as you can see here, um, X Stitch, you can put in the threads. It'll um, let you store the threads that you have on hand, DMC, um, any of the um, specialty threads um, that you have. You can store your charts and kits. Um, you can take a picture and store the charts and kits you have on hand. Um, your threads, your linen, it has a shopping list, so you can you can indicate what threads you need to buy um, on your next purchase for whatever projects you're working on. And it also has the journal. The journal is kind of nice because, well, let me go back. Let me go back here. So my homepage tells you, my homepage tells you that I have 84 journal entries. I have 700, uh, 129 charts and kits entered. I have 575 threads entered. And I have 14 pieces of fabric entered into the X stitch app. One of the other things I've been doing the last couple of weeks, um, I haven't been stitching, is I've been trying to get my X stitch app updated with um, patterns and kits and um, my whips. So the journal entries, if you see here the journal entries, there's 84 journal entries. The journal is how you track um, your wish list, what you've kitted, what you've started, and what you've finished. So as you can, uh, so as you can see, I have nothing in my wish list. I have 40 projects kitted. I have 44 projects started. I have zero projects finished. I do have some finishes to enter. I, I haven't entered them yet. 
And all total, I have 84 projects in my journal. So for started, if you click on started, my journal started. All right. Journal started. So these are the ones I've started here. So you can see um, it tells you information about, uh, you know, your kits, what you've started. I have that one in there twice. I don't know why. I have that one in there twice. Uh, delete. Started. Yep. So anyway, these are the kits that I've started. I have a lot. I'm just trying to get get a handle. I haven't finished everything in here yet. I haven't added a lot of stuff. Um, kitted. I have a lot kitted. I have as many kitted and ready to go as I do almost uh, started already. So, um, yeah, and it also lists your uh, charts and kits that you have on hand. So here are some of the designers of kits and charts that I have on hand, just some of them. Um, it's in alphabetical order by designer. Here's the threads. The threads are listed in company and um, thread type. Um, but this is just like more an inventory kind of thing and a way to track your progress on your pieces that you have in in your stash. Um, this is a fun app. I've been enjoying it a lot. The thing I've been using the most is the shopping list. See right now, here's my shopping list. This tells me the threads I need for whatever projects. Um, it doesn't tell me the project right away that I need, but uh, anyway, it tells me the threads I need, and then I can go ahead and delete them off this list once I purchase them. So that's helped me out a lot with uh, getting some of my stuff kitted up, especially with the um, overdyed like sampler threads and classic color works and weak style works threads and stuff like that that I need. Um, I wish they had a way to enter most sale thread. That would be great, but they don't just yet. Um, but yeah, so there's the pattern keeper, which is which allows you to track your progress on a specific pattern, and then the X Stitch app, which basically is your inventory app, um, which um, does keeps your inventory for your charts, your patterns, your threads, and everything like that. Um, they have one for diamond painting too. It is called Gems flow. Yep, it's called the Gems Flow app. Um, there's one for diamond painting too, but I can get into that a little bit later. I haven't really done it much with the Gems Flow thing because um, I've been kind of going through my stash, um, my cross stitch stuff to try and get it organized and ready to go up to the craft room. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about that second app. Ooh, because I didn't do it before. But anyway, I hope you've liked my video. Um, keep watching for the... Um, oh. Keep watching for the... Um, Anyway, keep sorry about that. I was uh, kind of looking at something, but keep watching for the um, mowing video. I hope you enjoy everything that you see, and uh, we'll take to we'll talk to you soon. All right, take care. Bye bye.
this is the front of our new house. And I'm in the I'm in the front moving. So my yard looks pretty good. Nope, nope, I missed some. So I will turn around. I was thought I was done with the front yard, but I'm not quite done yet. You see that long area right in there on the mailbox. I have to do that area. So there's a view down our street. Yay! Not so bad out here today. It's gonna get noisy. There's the main entrance of our street down there. That's Cleveland Avenue. Uh, we have a church. But yeah, our friend Alan's truck is here. And uh, anyway, I'm gonna get back to mowing. This is our front yard. We have a big front yard. So, all right. So yeah, this is me again, getting ready to head to the back 40, so I will drive us back there. This is our new yard. I'm on my John Deere riding mower. Our neighbors just had their driveway sealed. So this is the back 40 of my house. Um, the red part with all the windows, that's our sunroom. Um, my mom and I have been stitching in there a lot. Um, where my husband is, out kind of on the back patio. Um, my husband and I spend a lot of evenings and late afternoons out here um, sitting on the back patio. You can see I still need to finish mowing out here. But anyway, there's our neighbor's fenced in yard over there. They have two big Labradors. And the white buildings beyond that is the church. Um, but yeah, you can see it goes all the way back. And that is a nursing rehab center residence building back there. Um, so we have all this land. There's the big tree that fell right there. And then our friend Alan is in the orange shirt. He's over helping get some electrical stuff done. But um, yeah. It's pretty nice. Um, I'm showing you, that's our neighbor's, the back of our neighbor's house. Um, right there, right there, 
you can see his chicken coop. You can see his chickens in there. Um, we've gotten eggs from them. But way back over here on that red, that red building, there were, up until recently, there were foxes. Oh, they had their tree cut down. Look at that. So behind the red building, behind the red building you see, maybe, so you see that house right there that has a tree trunk through it. That was a tree house. It used to be up in a tree. So I'm guessing they had their tree cut down from the looks of it. But yeah, that was a tree house. Um, anyway, but that red building there has foxes living under it. Or at least it did have foxes living under it. But we've seen deer back here. We have groundhog. Um, I'm not sure what our neighbor uses those buildings for. But anyway, all our yards are big. big deer go back here we have groundhog foxes we saw a skunk the other night there's the street view towards the front of the house and my husband's still on the back patio and then you can see our neighbor's house over there and then this is the other side that's our shed our red shed it's a very nice house very big we're kind of loving it here so far and i'm I'm actually, even though I'm really tired when I'm doing this, I'm actually kind of having fun on my John Deere riding mower. Yep. So, it's it's a lot of fun. It's kind of cool. This orange, this yellow thing here, when you um, have it running, you pull this all the way up here and it uh, starts the mower blades. Or you can just kind of drive it around without the propellers or without the mower blades going. Um, this is the throttle right here, slow or fast, and uh, anyway, it's really nice sitting here in the shade, a nice breeze blowing, but it's a pretty day out today. But anyway, there's the back 40 of my new house, so I will put you away and uh, get to finishing mowing. Talk to you later. Bye.